Hello, everyone, and you've seen this teaser a few times now. <laughs> We're going to um, hear from five amazing mobile dome uh, directors. Even though John is not here, he's part of our video that Marco Avalo has uh, put together for us. We had so much to talk about, we were afraid we would run over time, so we made a video. And then we can have some questions at the end. So I will share my screen now and our video. And mute my. running planetarium shows with mobile planetarium in 2013 now we have a fixed dome and two mobile planetarium that we travel all over the state i run northern stars planetarium a private planetarium business in central maine in the united states i started this business in 1987 i had been running a planetarium in northern maine at a little science center uh, wonderful little planetarium, but it was a long way from where I wanted to live. The portable planetarium allowed me to live in the part of Maine I call home. I'm an astronomer, and I used to work as a professional astronomer for several years. Um, I then decided to go into outreach due to various frustrations with the academic world. And when I moved back to Austria from the UK, I decided that I wanted to start my own mobile planetarium as a one-person business, which I did about two years ago. After the school, I became a nurse and worked in a general hospital and finished with my Master's of Physics in Astronomy, Space Science and Astrophysics in 2013. At the moment we have three mobile domes and travel the whole of Germany and very rarely in other European countries as well to educate children and adults. I started my own video production company along with my first classic portable planetarium back in 1992. Then I studied chemistry but decided to work with the planetarium as a way to express my interest for both astronomy and art. Uh, of Yves Lumont, the LSS planetarium website and there you can find instructions on how to build your own mobile projection system with a regular projector and a combination of lenses and that's what I did and so I found also the, the software that I'm using there which is Stellarium 360 and I just turned out to be exactly what I needed for what I wanted to do. To work in schools we had to get a special material for our tents which have to be specific fire protection standard. Projection system wise we use 2K and 4K digital projector for our 6.0 7.3 and 7.5 meter tents. My business currently has two domes, a 4.8 meter dome and a 6.7 meter dome. And I travel to schools in central Maine, uh, visiting approximately 80 to 100 schools a year and providing programming for between 16 and 18,000 students per year. I am the director of the Unipampa Planetarium in the south of Brazil, the southernmost state in Brazil, Rio Grande do Sul. We are in the city of Bagé. Uh, we are an university planetarium. From the Central Valley in Costa Rica, we are able to reach every corner of the country, at most in a seven-hour trip. So, we serve everybody here. I think the best strategy to running a successful program is to have quality programming and live interactive presentations. Uh, talk about things you know and ask lots of questions and lead them through the discovery of whatever the topic might be. We usually have from 300 to 500 students per day in our planetarium. 
and we are able to achieve that by designing a very effective and high-impact presentation conceived both to educate and inspire. I think the most important strategy for such a business is quality. As um, the only properly trained person in the field in our company, I make sure all of our students that work for us are up to date with the latest development in astronomy and space flight. We have traveled to 25 cities all over the state. 18 of these cities uh, are distance learning centers of the university and then we visit each center that offers uh, geography courses. What has worked well for me is to interact with my audience inside the dome. So I'm basically trying to share my enthusiasm, my fascination of the subject with them. Uh, I give them my personal view, my, my awe of the cosmos and I encourage them to interact with me, to get involved, to ask me questions. After the visit, we have sent valuation forms for all the teachers that attend the course and visit the planetarium with their schools. Uh, I get feedback from the teachers and audience members after the show, so sometimes even by email. Teachers and students have recognized us mostly for our quality, responsibility and customer service. We usually have immediate feedback from the teachers and students. Sometimes we get more detailed written feedback from the teachers if they want to improve the experience for the students the next time. Uh, my evaluation process is uh, online primarily or in person. I have evaluation forms available with all my uh, prep materials available for the teachers online and they often email those back to me or drop them in the mail to me and I have lots of discussions with teachers when I'm in the schools and they give me great feedback as to how to improve programming and a new program they like to see happen. Our most common challenge is weather and temperature, since most of our country is hot and humid. Nowadays we have extended our digital planetarium to basically any topic so other companies and industries hire us for their presentations and that goes way beyond astronomy, posing a new challenge every time. We had some uh, quite interesting um, opportunities with some um, artists at the uh, Mestec Museum in the Netherlands. We also had some really interesting venues where we actually had our shoe planetarium put. Uh, from time to time, mostly in Christmas time, we rent out our tent to a local planetarium club and uh, they put um, the mobile dome in a church. Two of the most wonderful experiences I had in the mobile planetarium was a very, very, very poor school we visit and the second one when we received two deaf students uh, and I could talk just, hi, how are you, and using sign language, and they just smile that they were so grateful that we had uh, translations for sign language in our mobile dome. Uh, another time I worked at the Maine Wildlife Park. We set up outdoors under a blue tarp strung between trees, and just before the audience arrived, a thunderstorm arrived with winds blowing very hard and rain coming in and by the time we were ready for our audiences we had 15 centimeters of water all over the inside of the dome. Shows didn't happen that night. I won't do that one again. I visit mainly schools and kindergartens but uh, I also go to private events of course uh, and public shows in public spaces, parks, squares. And I think that's what the mobile planetarium is really made for. It's like really the meaning of the word outreach. We reach out to audiences that might not even think of visiting a planetarium. And that is one of the big strengths, I guess, of the mobile dome.
So that is, that is a view into our wild and wonderful world of mobile dome activities. We are planetarians who are challenged to bring our domes to every kid. By playing, Thanks, Susan, by you are uh, muted, just so you know. I'm muted. Oh, no. Ruth? I, sh I shouldn't be. <laughs> Ruth? I? No, Ruth, you are, you're just fine. Sorry about that. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> OK, well, we bring the dome to you by car, by train, by boat, by plane, or even by bicycle. During hot and steamy days. <laughs> uh, with, with rain and a lot of rain. No, a lot of snow. Uh, sleet and hail. Uh, we must be extra versatile and flexible while always bringing professional high quality presentations to our clients. <laughs> I want you to know that uh, all of these talented people, and I, of course, am retired from the planetarium field, but I am uh, um, available also to help you with your work. Um, so if you have any questions now or questions later, we're very happy to comment and um, perhaps we can help you think of ways to, uh, for instance, start up during COVID, uh, planet, portable planetariums, of course, are the most uh, challenged with that situation because we're very, very small. I've written some things in my column about how to um, uh, tackle some of those um, disadvantages. But uh, Marco, you've been working on some things too um, to open your business. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yes, of course. In fact, uh... What we have done here, well, of course, going online was one of the things we we, sh we had to do uh, with our government and some private uh, contracts. But uh, we are also going to um, distribute some virtual lenses so that people can have our planetarium in their homes. That is because uh, here in Costa Rica, everything is closed and that includes schools, high schools. So for this year, there won't be any any uh, anybody hiring us to go to schools and high schools. So we thought about uh, taking our domes not onto online classes, but uh, to, to people houses. So we're doing that with our virtual lenses and all that. I, I should say also that the video you just saw is uh, posted in the poster section of the IPS website. And if you want to learn the, about the details of our Costa Rica adventure with our planetarium, there is another video that you will find there that says uh, creative uses of the dome. And <laughs> that's very interesting. You should look at it because we made it uh, all our family. This is a family business. So my wife and my daughters will did that video for you. So I invite you to, to watch it. Thank you. Thank you. We have any time, Dana? Yeah, we have a couple minutes for questions. Thanks so much, Susan, Marco, Ruth, Tilo, and Guillerme. Uh, that was wonderful. Uh, there's lots of questions, so let's jump right in. How long is a usual mobile dome program uh, show and presentation with questions and answers? And uh, will this change with any of the new distancing regulations? Victor wants to know. Yeah. Ruth, want to talk about that? Sure. So uh, I do sort of interactive, flexible shows. So it really depends on uh, on the input of the audience. So my usual length is about 45 minutes. And if I get smaller kids in the dome, I do a bit less. And I talk about things sort of closer to Earth. And then if it's like a special show or a special birthday thing, uh, it can be up to like an hour and a half. But since it's all interactive, it can you know, can last for as long as people uh, have uh, patience <laughs> and questions. With COVID, of course, with the air exchange uh, have, having to uh, be completely uh, switched around, um, uh, we may have to reduce our time in the dome, but um, some people are actually using the projector without the dome and using, uh, calling it magic walls. So you can project on the room that you're in, which would give you a bigger space. And, and the kid, although not perfect, the kids really enjoy that too. Um, and you can really make it a, a interactive activity. 
Um, somebody was asking uh, in the chat about uh, how to make the planetarium projector. Go on the IPS website for resources for portable planetariums, and you will find those directions. There are several ways to make um, your own planetarium there listed. Um, and that's a good place to connect with us. Uh, someone I noticed was asking about, is there an organization? Um, but also you can go to the Planetarium Network, uh, our new um, interactive networking on the IPS website. And there are groups there for uh, small and mobile domes. Great, um, and we're a little over time, but Susan, you're the next presenter, and I know there's a lot of overlap between the next presentation and this one. And uh, so I wanna ask just one more question from Heather Jones, who is asking um, how you set the domes up outside, because they once heard that you're never supposed to set domes up outside, but they're seeing several pictures of them set up outside. We heard one horror story in your video there. And then that leads me to a question I have, have you ever forgotten anything in your car? after doing one of these that could have been damaged by the temperatures. I got to a school once and uh, planetarium wasn't in my car. It was still at home because I had dark windows and I did not load the planetarium. <laughs> <laughs> I had to bring somebody to bring it. Um, who else can talk about um, outside using the dome outside? It is very dangerous if you're yeah, not careful. I, I, can, I can do that. Uh, we have tried. Uh, we have succeeded sometimes and not in other times. There was, in fact, an a astronomy night where, where we took our planetarium and we had a hurricane, actually. So that, that didn't happen. But we have done a couple of birthday parties and um, another astronomy activity in the night which, in which we had a, a wonderful weather. So if the weather is okay, no wind, no rain, we can do that. Uh, yeah, but not, not, it's not happening all the time. 